Welcome to the video. Let's get started. Here is a little male bird hopping around on the ground. Just give you an idea of how tiny these little birds really are. It's catching insects, that's what they eat. He wasn't alone, there was at least one little brown female there as well. And now he is the swatching. I've chosen a few colours. The buff titanium is for the areas on his body that appear to be white. And I might use a bit of it in the background as well. Buff titanium was PW6 colon 1. And then Jane's Grey, also from Daniel Smith, is PB29 plus PB7. I'm planning to use a fairly dark wash of the Jane's Grey over the parts of his body that appear to be black. Because he's not black, he's actually a very dark blue. And then the French Ultramarine from Windsor Newton. This is one of my old tubes of paint from over 10 years ago. The Daniel Smith paints are all new ones that I haven't used before. I'm planning to use the French Ultramarine, a very pale wash of that, almost white, on his head and the other parts of his body that are a light blue. And then I will put some of the Scotman Cerulean Blue over the top of the French Ultramarine. I've only got one tube of Cotman paint and I've had it for years and I haven't been using it so I thought since these ones are going to be in my sketchbook I'll just use it up. Of course Cotman is the Windsor & Newton student paint. All of my other paints are professional. The Tiger's Eye Genuine is for his wings and I'll also use that in the background. It is one of Daniel Smith's Primatech colours. I'm just experimenting with it. The Lunar Black is only for his eye. That sort of ran in together with the tiger's eye because it was a bit wet. What I, the Indigo is also for his body. I'll just see what I can do there. I put all these colours out into a little palette and I didn't use them immediately. They'd all dried up. So then I put too much water in them. The Forest Grey, that's a Shimke Horodem forest grey. I'm going to use that for the background. He's standing on a concrete path and this yellow ochre is Windsor & Newton and again this is uh, one of my old tubes of paint from more than 10 years since I used it. And that's it for the colours and now I've scanned it to show you what it was like after it's dry and I'll put a picture of the bird that I'm going to use as my reference. The watercolour paper I used for the swatching was a very cheap Montmartre and I like to use that for things that I'm not actually wanting to keep the paintings of. They're just testing colours and that sort of thing. I'll be using good quality paper in my sketchbook. Although this Montmartre paper is, so it's not really bad quality paper, it's just not top quality professional artist grade paper. That's all. It's still pretty good. This is my watercolour brushes. I try to keep them all straight in a plastic container. Now for the sketchbook. This is still that sketchbook that I made over 10 years ago. I filled it with top quality artist grade watercolour paper. And this is where I'm going to paint the little bird. Looks like I've got his feet cut off. I will show you his feet eventually. Sorry about that. I just put the colours that I use in this little wooden bowl. It makes it easy for me to organise them. I did end up adding one extra colour and I had a little bit of fun with the French Ultramarine which you will see but I did fix it. It came out okay in the end. I dropped the lid of that tube of Cotman Cerulean Blue and I searched for about an hour and I couldn't find it so I gave up in the end. Went and put some plastic wrap over it. Hopefully that will keep it fine but then I'll have to just use it up faster than I was expecting to. I think the lid has gone underneath part of one of the chairs which I can't get to without dismantling the chair. Let's get started. I'm not exactly sure now of the particular paper that I'm going to be painting the little bird on. I think it could be Fabriano cold pressed. I know that I just bought a whole lot of different papers. They're full big sheets. They didn't come in sketchbooks or anything. They were full sheets of watercolour paper that I cut up when I was making this book. 
It is a lightweight paper that I've put in the book and that photo of the bird that's just an overlay I haven't actually printed it into the book itself it's just there so we can see the picture my reference is a photo that I took back in February 2022 at Forest Lake I had planned to paint the dark parts of his body with Jane's gray but that was a few days ago I ended up using indigo where I was going to use Jane's Grey. That's on his tail feathers and the dark parts of his head, chest and just up top of his wing. So indigo is quite dark and here I've got some freshly squeezed paint. It came out of the tube just as I was about to start painting so it's not all watered down. The end of his tail will be seen eventually. I don't seem to have lined it up very well at this point. I'm doing a voiceover with this because I decided not to try to record me speaking while I was painting. It didn't succeed very well last time and I don't think it would have been any better this time. After I'd finished I realized that I was painting on the reverse side of this sheet of watercolour paper and it was obvious by looking at it that this was not the side that I was supposed to be painting on but it was still okay to use and then I used the French ultramarine on the parts of his head and back that were the lighter colours and I tested it and I knew exactly how dark it was and that I needed to water it down a bit to to make it paler but I thought no it's fine I can lift out the feathers and make it look good it'll be interesting to see the lighter cerulean blue over the top of the dark ultramarine well it was a learning experience and I did manage to get it to work in the end but I had to do quite a lot of lifting fortunately this was good quality paper and it all worked out well in the end but I won't be doing that again, I hope. I'm still struggling a bit with the brushes, trying to work out which ones are best and most comfortable for me to use. I thought I needed this one because of the small areas that I was painting, but it didn't feel like it had enough paint in it for me. And then I changed it to a larger brush eventually, which I liked much better, but then I wasn't able to get into the little tiny bits that I wanted to even though it did have a really good sharp point on it. I guess I'll get used to them in the end. Hopefully it won't take me too long. The colour of the pale blue on him varies from bird to bird and apparently it depends on their hormone levels. They start out quite pale. Actually, the males look the same as the females until they become sexually mature. So that little brown female superb fairy wren that I painted in my previous video could have been an immature male because the immature males and the female superb fairy wrens look the same. as they get the more male hormones going in their bodies they change color and the the darkness of their pale blue depends on just how much male hormones they've got raging through their little bodies apparently the females have lots of boyfriends which help when the chicks are hatching the males go out and bring back insects for the to feed the babies and if she's got a lot of boyfriends, they will also help raise the chicks. And so when you see a little brown female with a lot of other little brown superb fairy wrens, well then a lot of the little brown ones will be immature males. I had the idea of lifting out a lot of that French ultramarine blue and then painting over the top with a cer cerulean blue to show the cerulean feathers but I didn't like the result so I went back and I lifted out most of the French ultramarine so I will skip over this bit because I ended up getting rid of it 
The pale blue bits are still wet, so they look darker than they were when they dried, but I did lift all that off and redo it. Now I am working on his little body. I'm just wetting it with clear water at this point. I haven't put any of the buff titanium on him yet. I'll do that later. But you'll soon see why I decided to get rid of the French ultramarine up top because there is some of the cerulean on his chest and it was just so different and so closer, so much closer to the re so the photo that I decided I liked. I wanted to try to get the other light blue parts of him more like the cerulean on his chest. Of course the problem is that neither French ultramarine nor the cerulean are on their own the correct colour. And I do have several other blues but none of them seemed to work any better. So I just had to do a bit of a mixture of the cerulean and the French ultramarine and hope that it did a reasonable job in the end. I don't think I'll be able to get it any closer than I did. And of course the photo is not necessarily the exact correct blue and these little birds their blue does vary a bit between each bird. Some are darker than others. I wasn't always this bad about trying to exactly match a colour but a few years ago one of the oil painting classes that I used to go to the tutor was a very experienced artist whose work sell for tens of thousands of dollars and he was insistent that we match the colour that we saw in nature. It might be a hundred metres away with you know doing plein air painting and just getting it exactly right. He also told us not to use things, some of the earth colours in our oil paintings because they just make them look muddy. It's just dirt so don't put it in your painting. Anyway well, I'll just do what I can with this little fellow. I'm still getting used to the watercolours. And another thing that I'm doing here is I'm experimenting with all these new colours I've bought. So it might take me quite a long time to get accustomed to knowing what each of them will do for me when I use them in my paintings. It's going to be an interesting few months I think, maybe even years. Now I might leave him dry for a while, probably come back to him the next day after I've added some very narrow washi tape all around him so I can work on the background and finish off the blue. I'm still not happy with the blue. At least you can see all of him at the moment. I didn't do any damage to the paper when I was lifting that blue. I wasn't actually scrubbing it hard, it was just lifting off the paint very gently. The main reason why I'm putting in the background is because some of those feathers on his tummy, particularly right next to his wings, they were really bright white and of course you can't make white any whiter than white. So the only way to get that to come forward as bright white is to make everything else on the page not white. The only thing brighter than the feathers is the little white patch in his eyeball. So that is the reason I ended up putting in some background. I had a bit of a problem with it in that it sort of seemed to make the shadow dissolve into the black into the background but I did fix that in the end. And it's nearly the end of the video now so I do hope you've enjoyed it. At the very end I've got another drawing that I did while I was working on this little wren. It is a drawing of a noisy miner. Now they're much bigger than the little wrens and they're extremely territorial birds and the groups of them will gang up on other birds to chase them out of their territory and they will even kill the little wrens if they can get at them which is why the little fairy wrens live in places where there's lots of undergrowth so they can duck in and hide in there away from the larger birds. But this particular one that I've done a drawing of I found in one of my photos that I took at Forest Lake 
and it is trying to frighten off a pigeon, a crested pigeon, and it's got another noisy miner there that's flying down from above and they're both picking on this poor pigeon but the pigeon's bigger than they are so and there was only two of, the, of them there were two pigeons as well but the other pigeon was hanging back because the crested pigeons they are always together in, or almost always together in pairs and then I will show you a photo of the bird that I'm planning to paint next because the one with the noisy miner, it's going to be a bigger painting and I'm thinking I might do that in oils. But the uh, other bird is something that's interesting and a bit different and it's exciting to find it at the lake. That's the comb crested jacana. So now you see in this, I'm, we've sort of got a bit of him hidden again. I'm putting in the dots. I thought the little stones might give it a bit of... A ch bit of a different look. I ended up knocking them back quite a lot because they ended up being way too dark. And I'm using Minnesota Pipestone on his legs now. Just experimenting. I haven't used that before. It's one of the Daniel Smith Primatech colours. It's made from crushing up a mineral. Apparently it used to be made the um, it, the American indigenous people, some of them used to use that stone uh, to make their peace pipes with. I'm doing a, a bit of reading up about it. I've forgotten which tribe it is, but one of them used to use that particular stone. Now I'm trying to lighten that blue again. I think I ended up putting a little bit of the ultramarine in the blue on his chest as well and it did improve things sort of matched it up a little bit better on the background I started with a very dilute wash of Shimke forest grey unfortunately I had forgotten to turn my light on and then I realized I had forgotten to turn the camera on so I stopped in the middle of putting on the wash to turn the light on and then turn the camera on and of course I got a darker patch of the grey where I was up to painting when I remembered that I needed to turn the light and the camera on but it wasn't too bad that's that there just in front of the bird's chest just under its beak to remember lights camera and then action not the other way around and the Jane's grey shadow which I wanted to be really sharply against the background bled a bit into it and now I Put a Minnesota pipe stone over the top of the forest grey and then I lifted it off for quite a lot and made it a very pale. I'm not 100% happy with it but that's it. If I keep fiddling it's only going to get worse isn't it? So that is the finished product. The washi tape didn't work terribly well. I didn't think it would. It's a really cheap one that I bought at Kmart. And now here is the noisy miner. It's a drawing I did with coloured pencil. I used a whole bunch of coloured pencils that I haven't got to put away. They're just there that I used to do rough sketches with. I do have a full set of Faber-Castell polychromous pencils, but I didn't get that set out. I just used odds and ends that I've got for me to get an idea of what the bird's like. And here is the bird that I'm planning to do, paint next time. It walks on the lily pads. It's got extraordinarily long toes, about as long as its body is. And it's got there with two chicks. So that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please give it a like and a comment on the video too if you want to say something. It all helps with getting it out there with YouTube. Bye-bye for now, and I'll see you in the next video.